Hello, welcome to Pass the Mic, an art and market broadcast series about generations in Southeast Asian art. In each episode, a contemporary artist discusses the work of one modern artist from Southeast Asia and reflects on its influence in their practice. I'm Vivian Yeo, writer at Art and Market, and I am very excited to have with us today Filipino artist Patricia Perez Eustachio, who has chosen to speak about the modern Filipino artist Vicente Manansala. Patricia is known for works that span different mediums and disciplines, from paintings, drawings, and sculptures to the fields of fashion, decor, and craft. She embeds images of carcasses and decay into the handiwork of design while merging contrasting qualities of the marginalized with the desired. Thanks very much for being here. Thank you for having me. So um, as the first question to kick us off, how did you come to know about Manansala and what about his practice interests you? Well, Vicente Manansala is considered one of the great um, moderns of Philippine art history. And in fact, he was one of the 13 moderns, they called it in Philippine art history. And I actually encountered his work um, in university because he went to the same university I did, although of course he went decades yeah. before me. <laughs> and. Um, I saw several of his works in one of the university museums, the Vargas Museum, and I found his, his painterly gestures very interesting. But more than that, Vicente Manansala developed a style that they called transparent cubism, which actually became so ubiquitous in in Philippine art. He was copied by hundreds or thousands of artists and generations upon generations of artists. So that even when I was a um, young painter, uh, there were several sort of art competitions that were popular among young students. And every year, I remember every year, the winner, the winner's work would look like Manansala's work. And so I, I found this really interesting because it, 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 his work kind of became this folksy motif um, and considered more sort of, yeah, like a motif instead of um, an idea. On that note, you created the digitally woven tapestry titled after Pila Pila yeah. in 2020. Um, in response to a painting called Pila Pila, created by Manansala in 1980. So what motivated you to create this artwork and could you tell us more about it? Um, I guess because when I started the, this series of tapestries, I really wanted to create um, translations of works by Filipino masters. And I wanted to sort of dissect it and sort of transform it into uh, a woven thing and, and sort of give it um, a more feminine language in contrast to its male language. And I started out by sort of building an archive of photographs of paint. So I would have paint and take photographs of them and I would create all these files of different colors of paint, different um, gestures, uh, thicknesses and all of that. And so I just had this huge archive of paint and, and doing that kind of, um, I guess, put painting through a filter of um, a, a mechanized filter so that it, it went from a human gesture to, to like a mechanical capture. Right. And, uh, and by doing that, I, I, I really wanted to interrogate sort of how we value the human gesture versus mechanical means. And then by 
by sort of plugging in these photographs of paint into works by Filipino masters and then transforming it into a digital tapestry. It, it goes through, I mean, an even sort of uh, lengthier process of, of um, mechanical transformations and digital transformations, sort of like, um, I guess, all these contemporary means that are available to me um, now. I mean, because we are living in these times where we are now sort of looking back at history and, and how we valued things mm -hmm. and, and art and artists in the past and, and sort of re-evaluating how we're looking at them. I wanted to you know, take a look at all these sort of master's works and see how I could translate their sort of modernist, um, post-colonial, um, male-dominated uh, mm. language into a more contemporary language. Choosing Pila Pila in particular um, was almost sort of irrelevant because I really love a lot of other works by Maransala, like his still lives, fish with jars. I mean, I found these so much more interesting than Pila Pila. Um, but I started out by choosing works where um, there was a very dominant male gaze and that the, the female was the object of the, of the work. And, and that actually characterizes a lot of early Filipino work in, in especially even in modernism, mo Philippine modernism, which is actually very, very special because it's in a way very figurative. So Manansala's work is considered modernist, but it's obviously very, very figurative as well, which is in contrast with, with Western modernist works. I was thinking that one of Manansala's uh, figure of paintings with women and Pila Pila had maybe oh, a dozen God. women. Yeah. yeah, a lot of women. <laughs> so I thought it would be interesting also to sort of try to, to have a work in response to that. And also it, it's one of his last paintings because he died about a year later. Um, as a last question, uh, why is it relevant to discuss Manansala today? Um, and what does his work continue to offer? <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, like what I was saying earlier, he really had a great influence on generations and generations of artists. And even when I was, I was young, I did not realize that the transparent cubism style was actually started by Manansala. Um, yeah, but I mean, I think taking away from what that popularity sort of that that made his work um unfortunately common mm. because it was copied by so many people um when you go back to looking at his his work again and and his earlier work i mean the as i, I mentioned earlier the still lives are really quite fabulous and um, and actually, interestingly, I remembered how good he was as an artist when I recently saw um, a portrait a painting that he made of, of my husband's grandmother. And, and I found that, that just, you know, it, mm. it was really beautiful. So, yeah, I mean, I guess you have sort of all these tensions and hesitations towards um, other artists' works, especially, I mean, being a feminist artist, um, <laughs> I sometimes look at, you know, all these, these celebrated male artists' work and I think that, oh my gosh, you know, they were celebrated because they were male, um, which is true. Um, 
and and so many female artists were were kind of ignored and marginalized during that time um, who were better or equally you know as as uh, relevant and substantial but um but yeah i mean manansala was was really uh, a talented painter i would say a very talented painter and and yeah it's it's still worth i think it's always worth looking at um works from the past because we are kind of products of history as well and we can only sort of reevaluate um our own contexts by looking at the past and and that's how we sort of move you know through space and time um, with the past behind us definitely it's always good to not take everything as the default but always good to criticize and have your own opinion right. yeah um, right, on right. that note, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. Um, how can audiences find out more about your practice? Um, I do have a very non-updated website, which is patriciaistaki.com. I think the last time I updated it was five years ago. <laughs> so the better place to do that would be um, through Silverlands, and they have links there for different interviews like this one um, and some of my past catalogs as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, to our audiences, if you enjoyed this episode, please spread the word and share it with a friend. Um, also, do visit our website, artandmarket.net, for more specialist content on Southeast Asian art. Um, we are on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and you can find us with the handle Art and Market. Uh, see you next time. Bye.